Hello. Welcome to the Mike Massey Show. I'm Mike Massey. Thanks for watching today. Uh, it's, I've got some fun stuff lined up for you today. Uh, I'm going to start off with a, a featured request. I'm going to do some Beatles for you on a, on a special anniversary. Hint, my shirt. I don't know if you can see it or not. But... Uh, no, no, no. The featured request is the first song. Um, and I've got an interview lined up for you today with my good friend Kyle Jones, who is in the touring industry, and he's based in Nashville. He's worked with a lot of huge tours, and I had a fun conversation with him yesterday, and I'm going to play that for you in a bit. So, uh, But first, we're going to start off with the featured request, which is Shine by Collective Soul. And uh, if you were tuning in last week on last Saturday night's show, you saw me play a request that John Pizzarelli asked me to learn. And um, and he is struck again, and he and this is the song for May. He said, uh, his May request is "Shine" by Collective Soul, and uh, go ahead and throw that up there. And he commissioned me to learn that song, and I've learned it for him. And so he was kind enough to give me that generous donation in exchange for learning the song. So, thank you very much, John and Yanni, both of you. And so let's, uh, without further ado, let's do some "Shine" for you. I started yesterday's, or not yesterday's show. I guess it was a uh, Wednesday show with some Collective Soul. We're gonna do it again. Give me a word, give me a sign Show me where to look, tell me what will I find Will I find Lay me on the ground and fly me in the sky Show me where to look, tell me what will I find Will I find Yeah Yeah. Whoa. Heaven, let your light shine down. 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 Love is in the water, love is in the air Show me where to look, tell me will love be there Love be there Teach me how to speak, teach me how to share Teach me where to go, tell me will love be there Love be there Yeah Yeah. Whoa. Heaven, let your light shine down. Whoa. Heaven, let your light shine down. Whoa. Heaven, let your light shine down. Whoa. Heaven, let your light shine down.
light shine down. Whoa, heaven, let your light shine down. Whoa, heaven, let your light shine down. Whoa, heaven, let your light shine down. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Heaven's little light shine on me. Hope you like that, John. That was fun. It's a good song. Switching. Uh, well, it's muted at the moment, but yeah, it's not off. If that's what you mean. Uh, yeah, let's do a geo roll call. Tell us where you're watching from. Mm hmm. I forgot to check that box. I'm doing a little, uh, sorry. It's, it's, yeah, when you're ready. Cool, man. Glad you liked it. My comments are working for the moment, so I'm taking advantage of it. Yeah, Geo Roll Call. Uh, let's, yeah, tell us where you're watching from if you're not already doing that. Yeah, cool. There it is. Excellent. Hello, Mom and Plano. Yes. All right. So if you've uh, never seen the show before, this is how it works. You make requests, and I play them. Cool, right? Um, if you would like to make a request, um, you can do so in the live chat. Um, I won't necessarily notice all of the chat's uh, requests immediately. Um, I try to go back and watch them, but... Um, if you want to make sure you get noticed, you can do it as a super chat request. You click on the little dollar symbol there, um, right below the live chat, and you can add in a, a, a payment amount and a message, which is your request. So tell me what you want to hear, and happy, I'm happy to play it. Also, you can make requests uh, via Venmo or PayPal. The links are in the video description, and the PayPal link is on your screen right now. Uh, leave that up for a minute, Timmy. Um, so we're going to leave that up for a sec, so you can uh, scan that with your phone if you want. It opens the uh, PayPal page, and uh, you can make a direct donation right there and uh, with a message if you type in a message I'll see it and if it's a request I'll play it and if I don't play it today I'll play it soon uh, and, and maybe tomorrow night I'm doing a show tomorrow night at 7 p.m. so uh, my time so it'll be like later than this tomorrow um, yeah perfect so yeah thanks for tuning in and um, I'm gonna uh, it seems like there's something else I wanted to mention to you um, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, if you'd like to get notified about uh, these streams, uh, you can you can follow me on Bands in Town. Uh, Bands in Town is a great way to get notified because they send out emails and such. Um, so, or you can just if you uh, click on if you go to my channel page and click the, on the notification button next to the subscribe button, which hopefully you've already subscribed. Um, to, just set the notifications to all, and you'll get um, notices when I go live. So you don't have to worry about doing it for each individual stream. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing a guitar lesson uh, on Tuesday. I'm doing a day in the life this week. Um, I'll do some of the other ones. I saw that uh, request for a time standstill. We can do that. Um, but I'm doing a day in life this week. That day in life was the first video I ever posted on YouTube. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that one after Africa. So that'll be Tuesday uh, at 4.30 p.m. Just after my show on Tuesday. So right on. All right. So uh, today we're going to do the Daily Beatles. Go for that. Today is uh, the anniversary, the 50th, 50th anniversary of the release of Let It Be by the Beatles, which was their last studio album. And, you know, they'd already broken up and it came out afterwards. Apparently the movie came out like at the same time as the album, like a day later or something, which is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, you can put that on, throw that up there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so Let It Be was 50 years ago. And uh, today, um, as you may recall, they had... Um, 
uh, what's his name? Spectre, Phil Spectre, uh, go in and do some post-production on it because uh, they'd kind of just left it with some basic tracks that they'd recorded and and uh, the Beatles weren't around to do all the, you know, mixing and all that. So that uh, so so Phil Spectre came in and added a bunch of orchestration and stuff. And um, that's why we have like this huge lush arrangement of Long and Winding Road um, because that wasn't what the Beatles had necessarily even intended, <laughs> much less uh, recorded. And so... Um, so yeah, so there's some controversy about whether or not Phil Spector improved or not on Let It Be, but um, I really like, I like Let It Be. I love the arrangements that he did for Let It Be and uh, Long Winding Road. I'm just kind of a sucker for the big orchestral stuff, so the sappy pop stuff. So it's kind of it's kind of fun. But but there's also that album called Let It Be Naked in parentheses, and Naked means uh, it's just without all the Phil Spector stuff added in. You can buy that album too if you want to hear more of a stripped down version of Let It Be. So that's my plug for the Beatles because you know they need some publicity. Happy to help out wherever I can. All right, so I'm going to do something different for you today. I'm going to play Let It Be, but I'm going to play it on guitar. Um, as you may be aware, this is not a song that I perform very often, and it's definitely not a song that I, um, ever, I've ever, I've never done it on guitar. I usually, well, maybe once or twice I've done it on guitar, like in, in my lifetime, but not traditionally on guitar. I usually play it on piano. Um, this song is very special to me and to my family. Um, I don't want to really get into why, um, because... I'm not sure who's watching right now, if you know what I mean. Um, but this song was very important to my family. And if you uh, just look for my video of Let It Be on YouTube, you'll see the in introduction why it was so important to me. And um, But it has a very happy ending, and we're all well, and we're all doing great. And it's many years later, so um, so here's Let It Be. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Yeah, let it be Whisper words of wisdom Let it be And when the broken hearted people Living in the world agree There will be an answer Let it be well, Though they may be parted There is still a chance That they will see there will be an answer, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be, yeah, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be, yeah, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom. Let it be When the night is cloudy There is still a light that shines on me Shine until tomorrow Let it be Wake up to the sound of music Mother Mary comes to me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be yeah, Let it be Let it be Let it be yeah, Let it be There will be an answer Let it be Let it be Let it be let it be.
Cool. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have any requests? Uh, cooking? Oh, thank you, Chris. Happy Friday yourself. Can I help the road in your eyes? I won't hold you back yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do. I won't hold you back sometime soon. Um, I uh, have a little bit of a, an allergy issue today, I think, or I'm getting a cold. I'm not sure which it is, but um, a little stuffy nose today. So I'm not sure if I want to try anything super crazy hard. But um, thank you. But yeah, we can do. Uh, how about we do it in your eyes? Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road is also a good song. I've been I've been grateful overall that I've um, managed to uh, not be sick <laughs> the past. I mean, you know, in a, in a way that hindered my voice anyway. Um, in the past couple months, while, while we've been doing these streams, I've actually been blessed with pretty good health, and I'm I'm grateful for that. Uh, I don't always have a good spring in terms of allergies and such, and I usually get a one whopper of a cold that lasts me like three weeks or more, like twice a year. You know, to, you know. Anyway, it just you know how it goes. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm. That it's it hasn't been worse, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'll do. I'll play in your eyes for you. Um, oh, I also wanted to mention it. You may have noticed um, if you subscribe to my channel that yesterday I posted a cover of "Stairway to Heaven," which um, isn't really entirely true. I didn't post it. I just made it public because I posted it three years ago, <laughs> and uh, YouTube blocked it the day I posted it, and I was like whoops, <laughs> that would have been good to know. Maybe I wouldn't have bothered to record it if I'd known it was going to get blocked instantly. But now I'm glad I recorded it because uh, here we are, three years later, and they decided to unblock it. Um, I'm not entirely sure when it got unblocked even because it wasn't something I was checking on <laughs> regularly. I just had the video sitting there, and it just said blocked on my list. And then I was looking at it yesterday because I was, you know, I had that thing happen where a song, uh, my stream got blocked couple days ago because I played a Beatles tune and YouTube thought it was the original for a few seconds like I fooled YouTube and so I went back I was just going to go back and see I'm like well maybe on Stairway to Heaven I could just you know maybe they'll just snip out a few seconds of it and leave the rest of it there and so I went to check on it and lo and behold they just let me publish the whole thing so here we are um, it was recorded three years ago it was supposed to the, the design the intent of recording it um, was that I was trying to use it to promote my upcoming tour at the time of Australia with Jeff Hall. We were doing, um, well, three public dates plus a private date in Australia. And I was going to use the Stairway to Heaven to kind of like, you know, get the word out. And uh, so <laughs> I needed a plan B real quick. Um, I'm not sure what I ended up using, but yeah. So uh, so the concert dates at the end of the video are <laughs> quite irrelevant now, but they're um, <laughs> from three years ago. Um, I, I kind of wonder if people, some people haven't been paying attention and they think I just like recorded that and posted it. They're like, oh, cool. A new video of Mike and Jeff. I'm like, well, not exactly. But, um, but yeah, uh, I wonder what those, those people think when they see concert dates from, <laughs> from 2018 listed at the end, but in 2017. But. Anyway, so yeah, so check out Stairway to Heaven. Um, some people have asked me if I'm going to do it in a stream now that it's like kind of unblocked, you know? Um, I probably will. Um, I might just kind of go for it on one night and just say, hey, everyone who's watching, <laughs> this, you might be the only ones to ever see this stream because the whole thing might get blocked. But um, if, they were to hold, if they were to block a whole stream, I would probably just like re-upload the whole show minus that song. Um, but I'm hoping what they would do would either be nothing or that they would just cut a few seconds of the song like they did last week with the Beatles tune, like if they thought it was the original. I don't know. I don't know what would happen. But anyway, so I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about doing Stairway to Heaven again. Oh, thank you. See, if I talk long enough, you guys are like, shut up and play. And you start paying me to play. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you. To be pure joy. Appreciate that. You know, I will. All right. Yeah, don't forget to uh, let me know what you want to hear. I love to change the world. Ten years after, right? It's Alvin Lee. All right. I don't actually know that song. <laughs> I mean, I, I did it a long time ago. I could relearn it, but I don't have it handy. Ready to raise him? 
Oh, by the way, let's introduce Tim. He's uh, the one running the controls. He's my 13-year-old son, and uh, he's just sitting here behind the scenes. Noah's not in the room, but he, he might be watching somewhere else.
Cool. Right on. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Drew. Oh, uh, yeah. You can do one of those. Bill, I don't know that Stones tune, but uh, if you have something else you'd like to hear that I do know, I'm happy to play it for you. Um, I have a song list on my website that has a list. of. Um, Tim's going to put the link on the screen for you right now. Um, I put it in the chat at the very beginning, but I don't know if it's too late. I can't pin it because it's gone. Um, oh, okay. And uh, th I said Drew, and I said uh, Bill, and then, oh, thank you, Johnny. Appreciate you. And thank you, Sir John. Uh, let me see. I just saw an email come in. We've got Constantino Perez. Thank you very much. Just a donation, no request. Uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I'll do one more song, and then we'll play the interview. You want me to do the? No, we'll do that. We'll do that after the the choice. Uh, I'll do one more request. Oh, oh well, yeah, we've got some. Uh, let's see. Mm hmm. Ruby Tuesday or Long Black Veil? How about Ruby Ruby Veil or Long Black Tuesday? Black Tuesday. There's Black Friday. Um, hmm. Let me long black veil. I'm going to dedicate this to Jeff Hall. Because we used to sing this together. And Jeff, this is one of the few songs that we sang where Jeff would take the high part. He would do the high harmony. And also, the reason I'm, other reason I'm dedicating this to Jeff Hall is because it talks about a judge... And we are both lawyers who have appeared in front of judges many, many times. Huh? Oh, a question? Yes. Oh, hi, Wade. How do I palm your pick like you did in the Zep song? Oh, you know, I don't know. I just kind of, you mean like the, on thank you? The When I'm finger picking? Oh, <laughs> can you see what I'm doing? No, I'm just kidding. Um... I don't know, I just kind of, I just have it there. <laughs> I hold it with my, I hold it, yeah, okay, well, I guess that's the answer. I hold it with two fingers and against my palm, and it's a pretty big pick. I use the kind, um, uh, these are triangles, and they're Clayton's, and I, these are personalized ones, you can't see it, but it has my logo on it. Um, I just made them. Uh, I think they're .80 millimeters, um, but yeah, but the nice thing about these picks is it doesn't matter which corner you use. So like, if you're just like fumbling with it in your hand, you don't have to get it in a certain position. Like any corner works. Having said that though, there's always a preferred corner for me because if I use it for a while, it kind of gets a little bent in a certain way where it like, that's the right corner. You know, like I always play it from the top, you know? And so I, sometimes I'll, I'll try to rotate it in my hand if it comes up wrong. <laughs> now it sounds like I'm playing a... <laughs> The lunatic. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's probably the answer to your question. The one that, um, the tricky one is that I did it on was uh, Dear Prudence. If you look at my YouTube video, I had a pick in my hand the whole time. I'm playing Dear Prudence until the very end when the strumming comes in. And I was just like, ugh. I don't, I, don't, I don't do it like that anymore. I think I just grab one. I have them on the mic stand. I just grab one. I don't know. Sometimes I, I palm it, though. All right, let's do this. This is a Johnny Cash song that was covered by Dave Matthews, and I'm kind of covering the Dave Matthews version, because I think he probably did some of it in a higher octave. Ten years ago, on a cold, dark night, someone was killed beneath the town hall light. There were few at the scene, but they all agreed that the slayer who ran looked a lot like me. She walks these hills in a long black veil. She visits my grave when the night winds wail. Nobody knows, nobody sees 
Nobody knows but me The judge said, son, what is your alibi? If you were somewhere else, then you won't have to die Well, I said not a word, though it meant my life For I'd be in the arms of my best friend's wife Ah, oh, she walks these hills in a long black veil She visits my grave in the night winds wail Nobody sees, nobody knows but me Now the scaffold is high, eternity is near She stood in the crowd and she shed not a tear Oh, sometimes at night when the cold winds blow in a long black veil She cries over my bones Ah, she walks these hills In a long black veil She visits my grave When the night winds wail Nobody sees, nobody knows but me Nobody knows, nobody sees, nobody knows but me I had two, th two thoughts during that song. One was, I had several thoughts. One was, sometimes the easy songs are the hardest because they require more concentration because you think you know them. So like three chord songs, you got a 33% chance of playing the right chord, but it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, and I was also thinking that uh, the judge said, son, what is your alibi? If, if you were somewhere else, then you won't have to die. Whoa. This is a capital case. This is a big deal. <laughs> so the first thing you do is you set it for a preliminary hearing. You know, give yourself a few months because, you know, discovery and whatnot. And then you set this thing for a lineup to make sure <laughs> that the eyewitnesses can pick your guy out of the lineup. Make sure it was him. Anyway, that's my old lawyer brain kicking in. I was a public defender. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we will. Donation, I'm looking for you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, we can do Wish You Were Here. We'll do that right after the interview, or soon after the interview. Um, so this interview is fun. This is a good one. I, I'm, I'm excited to share this with you today. I talked to my friend, Kyle Jones, Kyle W. Jones, um, who's based in Nashville. And Kyle, uh, we became, yeah, well, we talk about it, but yeah, we, we met on Facebook many, many years ago and, and uh, got to meet up in person and we, we call each other. And it's, yeah, he's, he's a great guy, a great guy to talk to. And uh but he's he's big in the touring industry, and um, so he's got some some cool stories to tell you, and, and just to talk about that a little bit. So uh, this interview, couple one one note about it, it was recorded yesterday. Um, I I decided to maybe lean away from the live interviews a little bit just because um, it's just that's a lot of tech to to work <laughs> during a live show, um, and so I it's it's almost easier for me to just kind of do it at a different time. And so I did it yesterday, and actually I'm kind of glad I did because we had a couple of issues. And uh, you'll know you'll you'll notice in one spot where there's a little cut, and it was just like it was just a glitch where just the signal inter got interrupted. We were talking about uh, Kyle's favorite live albums, and there's about 
15 seconds in there that's just missing. Um, and so uh, you'll notice that little cut. And then later, we actually lost him <laughs> just in the middle, middle of the show or middle of the, middle of the interview. We just lost his signal. And so there's, a, there's another cut where you say, okay, we're back. Or you hear me say, we're back. So, um, yeah, so a couple little glitches. But besides that, uh, it was a great interview, and um, I will enjoy it. And uh, I will be monitoring the live chat during the interview. And so if you have any questions you want to throw at me during the interview, I will try to see those and, and answer those in the chat. And then I'll be back with you with some music shortly. Okay? Oh. Uh, uh, Sir John, no, I do not still practice law. I have a, I have my law license. Um, when I moved to Colorado from Utah, I I did reciprocity and got. Uh, I'm a member of the Colorado State Bar, but once I got sworn in, I went to inactive status immediately, so I don't have to take continuing legal education and pay the same annual licensing dues, that kind of stuff. But I have my license if I ever need it. I'm hoping I don't have to. I don't want to be a lawyer again. And I have zero ties to the legal community in Colorado if I did. So it would be a, a tough row to hoe. But um, yeah, but uh, music's fun. And I'm going to do as long as I can. Thanks for asking. So uh, without further ado, here's my conversation with Kyle Jones. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, uh, folks, this is my friend Kyle Jones, and um, I'm excited that he's on the show with me today. And uh, we're going to be talking about the music industry because that's what Kyle does. Kyle is basically in the touring industry, which you can imagine uh, is, is facing some tough times right now. Um, but uh, I've, I met Kyle through Facebook. Oh, it's been probably six years, right? Something like that? At least six years. Yeah, it's been a while. And um, yeah. and we had the opportunity to meet in person, like right as I moved to Colorado. It was like literally like the day that we were unpacking when we arrived to Colorado. I remember yeah. you're like, I'm in town. I think you were like in town for, was it Peter Frampton or something? Peter Frampton. Yeah. Yeah. Entered or Peter Frampton Santana. I yeah, can't one of those. Yeah, the yeah. Was over at Fiddler's Green in Denver. Yeah, Fiddler's Green. Yep, I've been yeah. to that venue many times. I love that place. And yeah. uh, and we went and we had uh, lunch at a restaurant nearby, and and that was a good day, and that was fun, and that yeah. was kind of yeah. the beginning. And, and we've uh, we've been like phone buddies a lot. We've we've talked on the phone a bunch and uh, kept in touch. And yeah, and, we have. Uh, yeah, and and you. Oh, Tim, throw this picture up. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna throw this picture up real fast. Yeah, throw that one. And you are the reason that I have this picture. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, you you were the one who, you were the one who got me backstage yeah. for Rush, and for which yeah. I will be eternally in your debt. And uh, as yeah, we, yeah. as will That's my cool. friends Scott and Ken that were with me that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, that was a great a, picture. Was, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Neil. Neil really captured the moment. <laughs> no, that's yeah. the, that's the joke is that Neil was yeah. taking the picture because he wasn't there. But yeah. Yeah, we know we know that's yeah. not true. But yeah. yeah, you know the song "Limelight" kind of tells his story. You know, mm -hmm. exactly. He, uh, he can't pretend a stranger was a long-awaited friend. He just didn't like meet and greets. Right, right. No, yeah. he, uh, yeah. historically didn't like them. We knew we knew we knew we weren't going to get Neil that day, but it was, yeah. it was still it was still great to oh, yeah. shake Getty and Alex's hands, and yeah, that was that was surreal. So, uh, but uh, let me ask you a little bit about your music taste. You just, you, you just, you know, dropped a little rush on us there. But um, what, what would you consider maybe your top three favorite bands of all time? Oh, uh, top three of all time would be the Beatles. I was a young kid, and uh, my uh, my older sister and them had they had Beatles records, so I love the Beatles. And then I would uh, think that I, I love bands like. Uh, Bad Company. Mm -hmm. I'll give you more than three, but get Bad sure, Company. Sure, yeah, yeah, go for it. That's but fine. I really love Kansas because they were so uh, prog music, you know, progressive rock, and and uh, and they were for to be from Topeka, Kansas, and four big right. burly uh, guys and a couple of regular smaller <laughs> guys in their band. They were just an unusual band to come from from nowhere, middle yeah. America, nowhere. They didn't have uh, the influence, local influences of like L.A. musicians or Nashville yeah. or or New York. So I really like them. Uh, of course, all the great seventies and there were a lot of eighties bands. And then I even go, I do have influences and things that I like about nineties bands, bands from the, from the Seattle area. Mm -hmm. And when that era came out, I did like Nirvana and mm -hmm. Allison chains and Soundgarden and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I like bands that my friends here in Nashville laugh at me about, because I do listen to Nickelback and I will <laughs> listen to puddle of mud, which people <laughs> all list. These as some of the most terrific bands ever, but I like <laughs> their stuff and hinder. So I listen to, but I tend to go to the little bit more harder, less poppy side of music sometimes, mm -hmm. but then I catch myself listening to, some of these 70 England Dan and John Ford Coley and James Taylor and all those. So really. And then I, I love, uh, uh, classical music. 
uh, I listen to blues for about three songs and then it's the same song over. So, <laughs> but I do like great blues music. So I'm not here to diss anybody and what yeah, they yeah, like. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody has different tastes in music. And, and even my wife and I, or my children and I, or my, my dearest friends and stuff that I, that I've known forever, we all listen to different things. Yeah. Right on. Um, so do you have, since you're in the touring industry, um, and we're gonna talk about what you do, but, um, do you have, um, a, maybe give me your three or four favorite live albums of all time. Oh, my favorite live albums of all time. Oh, it's so easy. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. For me, it is anyway. When cool. I was a young kid, uh, you know, teenager, junior high, high school. Oh yes. The, oh, yeah. yeah. That I remember like shock me. I really loved shock me. Yeah. That was Ace Freely tune. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. loved Ace. Ace was my favorite. I had big posters of Ace on my wall. I had basically <laughs> like homemade kiss wallpaper just from like magazine clippings and posters that I put up everywhere. So I yeah. went through a huge kiss phase as a kid. Yeah, for sure. That's At my cool. uh, 40, re- 40 year reunion. Yeah, folks, I'm old. At my 40 <laughs> reunion a couple of years ago, I graduated high school in 1978. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a small town outside of Houston where I grew up and I went back to it because of all my friends that made fun of me and I, one of the, and I, I was kind of the MC of the show and I'd put together some interviews from famous musicians talking about our little small town and, nice. and, and, and a couple of movie actors, movie stars that I know actually nice. big stars. And then, and so I had a real nice thing. And so then one of the, the things that I put up on the screen was, a picture of kiss and they all were like laughing at me and then below it, it showed how many records they sold. Oh you know? yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can't well, even I imagine. Said, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I had to rub that in. You know? Right. For me, when I'm th- talk- thinking live albums for me, I'd have to name check three sides live by Genesis and yes songs and exit stage left. Cause I'm kind of a prog guy, but right. those are, yeah, those are big ones for me. Cool. I, I toured with Genesis. Oh so, yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, what year was that? 1992 though. We can't dance. Oh tour. yeah. That was a good tour. So, yeah, yeah. So all their staging and stuff uh, was a stage co stage, but all their sets and all the stuff that was on the stage, all the aluminum things and the yeah. fancy screens that were moved and all, were done at a company in West Texas called Tomcat. Okay. Friend of mine, Mitch Clark. And uh, they built all that stuff. And then we brought it all to Houston, and uh, Houston had a good year blimp base. Oh. And, they, and they had just decided to shut it down and concentrate the blimps on the coasts. So one in Florida, I guess, and one in L.A. Okay. And, and our blimp went away. Oh. And so uh, we went up and leased that facility, and we brought the the production in for Genesis, and we we erected two indoor stadium stages inside the hangar. Wow. Uh, we're we're going to put together right, and two outdoor ones. Wow. Uh, we put together there just to make sure everything fit because we were leapfrogging stages all over the world. Oh, wow. And uh, and it was just a great, great fun. It was uh, – I remember one thing was that they uh, – they had delivered, uh, they were going to take Mike Rutherford down to meet the Gibson guitar guy. And there's a big, big guitar store in Houston, uh, or well-known guitar store. It's over in the Westheimer, Lower Montrose area called Rockin' Robin Guitars. 50 or 60-year-old store. Been there a long, long time. And I used to buy guitars. Everybody bought guitars there. That was the place to buy your guitars. And so he went down there to meet the Gibson guy, and they needed somebody to take him. So I took him down. Nice. And they gave him they gave him like six or eight Gibson Chet Atkins, uh, those solid body acoustic guitars. <laughs> and so we got them back and set them up in the green room of the place uh, at the blimp hangar and all. And so later that afternoon, he called me in there and he had them all set up and. And he goes, which one of those do you like the most? I said, man, I like them all. And finally he goes, what do you like the best? And I pointed over to this natural one and he goes, you do? I go, yeah. He goes, that's yours. <laughs> that's awesome. So kind of a deal, you know. And, that was good, um, good, good pay for giving them a ride, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's awesome. So tell us, okay, tell us, let's back up a little bit and talk about, um, tell us what you do presently. Like what is your current job? So the company I work for now, I'm, I'm a vice president uh, of a uh, uh, client develop artist development it's maybe a sales type position of marketing our company and our companies are uh, a man named jim brammer and his partners years and years ago started a company called special event services and they started doing uh production for concerts and things like that and and uh christian market they worked with billy graham hmm. and they worked with corporate america over in the carolinas and stuff and it just kept developing and getting more and more into music and one of the bands that played at some corporate shows in the Carolinas was a college band called Hootie and the Blowfish. Oh, okay. And so Hootie became our first client oh. and we were doing, uh, you know, audio and, 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 and lighting and things like that 
for Hootie for all those years. And then uh, fast forward to last year in 2019, when Hootie was out on their reunion tour, we did the complete production. We did lights, sound, video, the rigging. Mm-hmm. We did uh, buses and trucks because our company also owns a trucking company. And we okay. operate okay. A, a fleet of just right under 100 semis. Wow. And a fleet of about 20 tour buses that we're growing that company right now. We actually have some in the pipeline being built right now here in Nashville. Wow. So uh, we also own a company called G2 Structures, and it's probably the second largest staging company in the world that competes with people like Mountain Productions and and uh, Stage Co., which is the largest in the world out of Belgium and Colorado Springs, hmm. and a uh, big, big company who the Stones and people like that use. But gotcha. we're our company just won the uh, staging company of the year back nice. in January at the Parnelli Award. So it's a respected company to be so young. Yeah, that's awesome. And, it, and it's just barely five or six, seven years old. And, and, uh, and growing. So we, we have all the gear and stuff to produce a tour, whether it be a small club tour all the way up to the big stadium tours. We nice. went to Europe last year and, and provided some of the production all over Europe and stuff with Ed Sheeran. Right on. Oh, so, you, yeah, why don't you go ahead and tell us some of the other like clients you've had lately? Just Oh, yeah. Know. Yeah. So, I mean, we have, we have clients like uh, Luke Combs. We do Hootie. We work with Three Doors Down. Uh, uh, Alanis Morissette, just, uh, I could sit and name Carrie Underwood, Toby Keith. So a lot of, a lot of big acts, the Eagles mm-hmm. we work with. So, uh, the Doobie brothers. So a lot of different acts, new and old, uh, mm-hmm. I could sit awesome. and name, but a lot of different acts that you've seen. We do. That's cool. And you started off as a musician. I mean, you're still yeah, a musician, back in, but yeah, yeah. Back in the day, started off, you know, a front guy in a rock band, so how did you guys get your first like break? As a band? Uh, oh, playing clubs and stuff, and we you know we played clubs and stuff all around Texas and Houston, and that's how I learned about production then too. And so we you know, had breaks playing the clubs and and uh, and me trying to be this front guy. And I had this dream like everybody has, like you have, and anybody that's mm-hmm. a musician, you know, and and uh, and and you hope that it happens, and and then you work it as hard as you can, and then at some point if it's you're not making a full time living at it, you got to drop back and, and punt and think about something else. But I, I can tell you this still to this day, four or five years ago, at a big Christmas party, I got up and performed <laughs> with a group, a group of guys at our Christmas party. And I, and then I told them and my wife too, that I could never do it again because it lights that fire in you. Know, oh and you, yeah. You can, you can tell, you know, if yeah. you haven't 15, 20 years and all of a sudden you're up on stage and, and people are, you're interacting with them that way musically yeah. and, and it uh, and it really hurts. Yeah. To, you know, so I yeah. just told him I said I'm done, you know. But I enjoyed uh. it. So anyway, and then I I got married. Uh, I met my wife. Our our parents introduced us. Cool. Uh, on a Sunday afternoon, three hours <laughs> later, I kissed her and asked her to marry me. Oh my goodness. We got married just a few months later. That's and amazing. we are about to have our 40th anniversary this nice. September. So, so she's put up with me. I'm not the cat. She's the cat. <laughs> and most of the people in the music industry call her St. Gail. Oh, that's nice. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, so fast forward, you know, you go get an education, you go start working. So my, I was working selling heavy equipment uh, for a, a company called Hertz Equipment Rental. And I started doing um, special events with a, a company out of Houston called Pace Motorsports. And Pace would produce um, uh, the motocross, the supercross things, the tractor pulls, uh, the monster trucks, all the crushing things like hmm. the grave digger things <laughs> where they were back in the day. And, and so they would do those things. And I was providing heavy equipment to build the dirt in the Astrodome or up at Texas Stadium okay. or some, some other thing. And so one of the, uh, the founders of that company, C.E. Altman, one day, wonderful man, he passed on since, but uh, he said, you know, you need to talk to our people in the concert division. They could use your services. And I said, mm. well, they don't use backhoes and bulldozers and front-end loaders. He goes, no, but they use generators. They use forklifts. They use man lifts and light towers and hmm. things like that. So he introduced me to a guy that ended up being now my lifelong best friend. Nice. And his name is Steve Lawler. And Steve is now with, he was with Pace Concerts, and Pace Concerts has morphed into Live Nation. In fact, Live Nation's first CEO was the founder of uh, Pace Concerts' son, uh, Brian uh, Becker. And so Steve brought me in, and I started providing things for them, and then I saw a need to form a production company. And then my production company got involved uh, just fast forward six or seven years later. I'm working with Genesis and, <laughs> you know, the Rolling Stones and, and uh, uh, 
Elton John, Billy Joel, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, oh, the wow. Eagles, Hell Freezes Over tour. Yeah, so we're, yeah. we're involved in all this stuff. It just kind of morphed. That's and cool. then in the, in the 90s, I started a trucking company and ran and my wife and I operated it, a trucking company in the music business only. Mm -hmm. And uh, we operated it for uh, some time, five or six years or so, and then sold it to a competitor. And then I, I stayed uh, <clears throat> with a company for the longest called Stage Call. And, uh, and they sold a few years ago to some other owners and decided it was time for me to uh, go out to the pasture. So I, <laughs> I got my little uh, uh, silver parachute. <laughs> And uh, I didn't get rich off of it. Right. And I stepped aside and I, and I was off basically almost a year and then, then moved over to uh, one of uh, the big premier companies uh, uh, with Jim Brammer, which is a family operating company. Okay. My son works here. He's a video director and, a, nice. and head, of, uh, head of the LED wall system here in Nashville and all. Good kid, nice. 34 years old. So that's kind of my history, how I trekked from, from doing one thing to the next. You know, I just, I just kind of... Uh, you morph, you do what you have to do. And, and what people right now, uh, uh, to segue, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Talk about like how, how are people uh, adapting to the lack of touring right now? Yeah. Yeah, with the COVID-19, I hate to use that word because it's yeah. a dirty word. But with it yeah. happening now, the music industry is devastated. I mean, everything in America, I just saw today where there's 30 plus million people unemployed. Yeah. So we can't just say, oh, poor, poor piddle for us right, in the right. music business. Oh, okay. We're back. We had a little uh, disconnect, but we're going to pick up where we left off. So, Kyle, um, we were talking about, I'd asked you about how the music industry had been affected by um, this, the current situation. And you were talking a little bit about, um, yeah, what, how your company and others in the industry are adapting right now. Yeah. And so how everybody's adapting. Uh, it's, you know, the, I feel I feel for all of us that are in that, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been devastating for people. They have, uh, believe it or not, when people think of touring industry people or roadies, as a lot of people like to call us, when they think of that, they, uh, you know, they always think that uh, it's a bunch of guys that were partying and hung out. They think of the surfer type or mm, the hippie mm. type, but it's not really it. You know, in today's thing, more likely than not, uh, a roadie has a college degree. I mean, uh, maybe a music business degree from one of the mm, universities. Mm, mm. So to, to answer your question, what the guys are doing they're doing everything. I mean, I, I, I keep up with them on Facebook and social media and in person and stuff. But a lot of them are, if they're in the past, were a, uh, were a carpenter or something. Some of them are working in construction. Some of them are working at Lowe's. Some of them are, uh, are some of them are set enough for that two months hasn't killed them yet, two or three months. But And they're just kind of taking care of their business. But a lot of them are doing whatever they can to earn a living. Yeah. Uh, and and so, you said the trucks have been driving other yeah, stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like our tour buses, they're they're parked. Yeah, I mean, uh, our our tours, you know, we work with people, some of the biggest artists, and they they worked until the last minute, then the plug was pulled, mm -hmm. and the plug was pulled. So our trucks, though, we uh, or we're trying to help America get the uh, necessary goods out there to keep the food flow going, the keep the PPE, uh, mask and gloves and things like that, medical mm -hmm. supplies going. So we we did that for uh, about six weeks, and then the freight rates. Uh, because the manufacturing shut down, oh. uh, the, there's a lot, a big excess of trucks. Oh, so the yeah. rates, the rates were really dropping, dropping, dropping to where it was, it was not profitable to do it. Mm -hmm. So we've, uh, we've let our guys take a break for a while, uh, for a few weeks and, uh, take it easy. And we're taking care of our folks and, uh, and, and this company's so good about taking care of their people. That's nice. And, uh, and we're about to crank it back up here in the next week, uh, and go back out there because with the comp country opening up somewhat in so many states 30 something states opening in some fashion we're uh hoping to see a trend of of, of the rates going up and we mm -hmm. can go out and operate till the music, music industry comes back because we have bills to pay and, sure. and families to try to keep going uh sadly our touring folks and our our light sound video those type people there's just not anything going on so we're, we're just doing the best we can yeah as of our competitors or anybody else, anybody, yeah. anybody in this business, I think we're just trying to, trying to just to figure it out. Yeah, me too. I'm trying to figure it out for yeah. myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, why yeah, we're yeah. here yeah. today. Somebody <laughs> like you, my goodness, you, you depend, you know, uh, you know, you're not practicing law anymore right, right. now. I, I take it. So yeah. you've made your money going out uh, and you're, and you're kind of an anomaly, somebody that's become a, a star from, from uh, YouTube, yeah. if you will. And yeah. be able to go out and make a go out and make a living and, and take care of your family by traveling the world, 
doing yeah. these shows of your music. And, I had uh, I had more gigs booked this year than I ever had before, and it was just right. all that all that work that we did, you know, ourselves is just thin air yeah. up in thin air, it's just gone. Yeah, all that same time with we us. Spent. We, we had we had a, a banner year yeah. predicted, but I can tell you this, just on a positive note, uh, for anybody that's worried about music, and uh, you know, I think music helps heal us, and people yeah. depend on uh, uh, going to a concert to get away from the day to day grind of life and things and work. Uh, when music comes back, it's going to be. It's going to be balls to the walls, as I, I hope say. So yeah, it, it will be. And 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 Bob Brew is the president uh, of Live Nation, mm -hmm. and a good friend. And 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 uh, I can tell you that he stated before that in these A markets like uh, 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 Dallas, uh, 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 Los Angeles, Atlanta, New York, all the Chicago, the big A markets, there's going to be some nights next year that the arenas are going to be operating seven nights a week between hockey games, basketball mm -hmm. games concerts, special events, whatever. And so it's going to be wide open. And so the only negative thing for the touring industry is, is that everybody's going to need to, because they haven't worked this year. And whether you think they're gazillionaires or not, they have bills just like everybody else to pay yeah. and bill for their corporations and their employees that they're keeping on and stuff. So they're going to be working, but the, uh, there's going to be a shortage of gear, shortage of trucks, shortage of buses. Mm -hmm. shortage of venues so they're gonna have mm -hmm. to figure all this out the live mm -hmm. nation the aeg lives and, and things like that i have a friend danny zalesco and he uh, is in phoenix he's a promoter and uh, for, and, he, and promotes all over the country just because he operates out of phoenix he goes all over but he's a he's a mid-level promoter he's not a live nation or something like right. that but he he promotes the the shows that playing in the the theaters the three thousand five thousand seat theaters and yeah. smaller and does very well with people like alan parsons and Sure. And, and a lot of bands that you would name, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of people, you know, but he obviously has got to figure that out too. He and, and, and promoters like him and they will, I mean, he's, yeah. he's sharp, he's got relationships. So it's uh, definitely going to be a different spin, but we're all looking forward to it. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you um, about, um, give me an example or two of, of people that you were just most excited that you got to meet in your career. I oh my god! Musicians are yeah, but you know something. I'll, and I'll real quick before I get into that, I'll tell you yeah. this: I have people always wanting meet and greets, and 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 I worked for a long time for country uh, singer George Strait, mm -hmm. and I was Georgia's stage manager, and we did security, I did all the meet and greets. But people were always wanting to meet him or wanting tickets, and people are always wanting tickets to stuff because I work with so many different artists because mm -hmm. I don't just work with one artist. I get every day. You know, somebody sure. sending me a text or an email, but then they want to meet somebody. And I said, well, yeah, oh, no, but yeah, but, be, but, but, but it's not a problem. I, I listen, I'm, I'm passionate about it too. Yeah. And, uh, but the funny thing is I always tell them and warn them, look, be careful now because this preconceived notion you have of somebody mm -hmm. could be ruined forever. True. Right. You know? Right. And right. Uh, I remember, I remember the first time that I met kiss because I love these guys mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and uh, Gene and Paul were, were not all touchy feely, lovey yep. huggy. Yep. And I'm thinking, oh, wait, you're meeting me guy. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm your biggest fan, but they were not uh, uh, by any sense of the matter, disrespectful. They were great. Right. 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 And, oh, their, their whole organization was good to be around. So I have nothing bad to say. Um, but meeting some of the people, I mean, I've met the Rolling Stones. I've met, uh, all the Rolling Stones and they're wow. good people. Uh, the Who, uh, nice. You know, just about every country artist there is. I've met, you know met movie stars and That's and awesome. things, but uh, a lot of them impress me. But but I also like meeting. Believe it or not, for, for me meeting, uh, I like to meet the people that put the tours on. People that I don't know that that are lighting guys and video guys and young people. And I like to hear their stories. Veterans. I'm a veteran. Other people that are veterans and stuff. I like meeting people that uh that come from all different walks of the world they end up doing this crazy thing called the music business yeah and, and i always wonder just like you asked me how did you get there because everybody has a story they yeah. got there i mean very few and there are people though that have it you know set in their mind i think my son you know knew because he grew up around it my children were backstage as infants you know and uh, uh i can remember my son was about two years old and we were doing um lollapalooza back probably the first year of it it was down south of houston and uh the red hot chili peppers were playing mm -hmm. i mean a bunch of those bands were playing and uh i was standing on the side of the stage holding him with another friend of mine john mozzarelli muzzy as we call him used to work with cheap trick for years but he was there 
And all of a sudden, the lead singer, and I'm, you got to correct me, of the Chili Peppers. Uh, can mm-hmm. I cannot think of his name. Uh, Anthony. Yeah. Uh, whatever. And <laughs> yeah. Over, and With the cake. Over yeah. And grabs my son and says, is this okay? And I went, okay. I didn't know what he's doing. Right in the middle of the song, he throws my kid up on his shoulders. Oh, wow. Out on the stage singing a song with his two-year-old kid on his shoulders. Oh, you that's know? funny. And uh, and just strange stuff. So yeah. my kid grew up around it. My children grew up around it. Right. And and so both of them work in the music business. And um, oh, that's awesome. And and so my son, I think he knew, you know, that this is what he wanted to do. And even though I pushed him away from it, <laughs> uh, you know, my father pushed me away from you know wanting to do what he did, you know. So. But it's I always like seeing the people that want to do it. Mm-hmm. But I do like I do like meeting the artists. I, I've rarely met one that I I didn't like the encounter I had with them. Let's talk about when you met me. <laughs> oh, so so yeah, me. I, I love music, and I love and I don't just want to see the same cookie cutter stuff over and over and over. And I like to see people doing different things. So I had just found when I found you, I just found this young Asian guy guitar player named Jack Tamarat. I don't know if you know him. I don't. But he's he's an Eric Johnson type guy. I mean, just you have to look research him folks, but it's T H A M A R R A T, I believe. But he's from from over in Southeast Asia somewhere in that area and uh Taiwan or something. But he is unbelievable. So I just met him and so I was all fired up about finding somebody that's just phenomenal musician that's going out, making it on his own, doing his own thing and not just waiting to get the record deal this way or waiting to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I was just searching for him. So I remember, um, uh, and how I found him is about the same exact way I found you. It was by accident. And so I found him because I was trying to show somebody because I'd worked years ago in Eric Johnson's show in Austin and there was a video shot of me standing on the side of the stage in one of these live videos. And I was wanting to look and see if I could determine who was with me. And I typed in Avia Musicom, uh, Cliffs of Dover. And it brought, I started playing it. And I wasn't looking as I was playing. I was doing something. And it was just spot on. And I looked up and it wasn't Eric Johnson. It was this little Asian guy playing the song. <laughs> nice. So in the same way, I was looking for Africa. <laughs> mm-hmm to post Africa on a friend's uh, wall because we had done some Toto stuff. And I saw your thing pop up. And I said, look at these two guys, burly looking guys in a, <laughs> in a pizza place, you know, in, in <laughs> Lake city and uh, in Utah there. And, uh, and I played it and I was just blown away and I, I must automatically, I posted it. Then I started sending it to my friends and you I hear these guys, you know, the <laughs> harmonies and the, and just the, in the structure and the way that they're, you know, doing it. And so I just kind of fell in love with your music. So then I started discovering all your videos cool. and then, uh, then I just started posting them, hooking a lot of my friends up with it. And, uh, and, uh, and people in Nashville love you, you know, oh, you're the nice. real deal, you know, and, uh, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, my career was early in the music business and ended early, and I'm doing something different. And yours mm. started late. Yeah, you know, you, exactly. You did start. You did start. And you've been a musician your entire life, like everybody is. But right. as, as far as you making a living at it, right? You, start, you started at a later time. And uh, but my goodness, I, I sit and think about the the production of uh, of uh, more than a feeling. <laughs> uh, that, that version you did, and the mm-hmm. video of that, and the and the violinist uh, who's just pristine. Mm-hmm. That whole Jenny video, Oaks Baker, yeah, done, yeah, yeah, just done very well, and the uh, and, and the shots with the drones, perfect, <laughs> and uh, and so it was done well, and then and then I and then I love your uh, your your sound of silence in black and white, mm-hmm. or, or uh, a boxer, yeah, boxer, the boxer, yeah, yeah, the boxer yeah, yeah. was in black and white. That's mm-hmm. right, yeah, right, the boxer yeah, yeah. was in black and white, done so well. Thank you. And that was right after you came to Denver, I believe. Uh, that was right before I came to Denver. Right, the box right was, yeah, okay. was one of the last things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the last things you did there. And then yeah. and then some of the other things you've done, the Beatles things. I just love the Beatles stuff. Cool. And uh and the the one video you have that does the uh the, the two play that does the two songs back to back. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um yeah. things we said today and I'll, I'll be back. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Done yeah. well, the transitions go. So anybody, you're the real deal. Thank you. And then we've just kind of hit it off always. And of course, with Noah being sick at the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you really got going good, Noah was sick and yeah. what a miracle, you know, yeah. just seeing him a few minutes ago before we went on here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was wonderful. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's a survivor and your family's a survivor. So yeah. it was been, it's been kind of great getting to know you. Uh, I that. wish you lived here in Nashville. We'd see you more, but you are, it is what it is. And I'm I supposed to, to have a show scheduled in Nashville later this year. Let's see if it yeah. happens. 
<laughs> Who knows? Yeah, we've been talking about that now for about a year, haven't we? I know. We? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so, finally... so anyway, but the people here love you, and uh, and I and I think people around the world love what you do, and oh, and, you, you. and I think you're a unifier. I don't think you're a, a divider. I think you. I, I think you to bring be. people together with your music. I try. Thank you. That's yeah, you very do. kind. Yeah. You you told me um, that you were aware of. At least, like James Taylor hearing my music. You told me a story oh, yeah. the first so, time we yeah, met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friend of mine was a friend of mine's guitar tech for James Taylor, and I, I sent it to him, and uh, and and commented, you know, definitely commented back that he loved what you did, and, awesome. and I've done the same thing. Well, I, I produced a, a record here, a demo record with some girls, uh, probably seven or eight, ten years ago, and and we cut um, uh, the Rolling Stones song "Wild Horses." Oh, right on. Uh-huh. And, and I had my friend Steve Henson, who's probably the, the biggest A-list, one of the biggest A-list steel guitar players here in town. And he laid down some steel guitar on the, uh, on the Rolling Stones song, Wild nice. Horses, with this young, young singer who was just awesome. And I sent it to my friend that works for the Stones, and he was uh, Keith Richards' guitar tech. And and uh, it just was effing brilliant. You know? I always <laughs> wanted steel on that song, and Nick uh, shut me down. You know? <laughs> That's so, cute. But so it's cool when you send stuff like that. So yeah. I sent it. I've sent yours to them, and I, and I sent one to, uh, I don't know if we sent it to Lucre and them for Toto. I'm almost sure I did that Toto's seen it. I know mm-hmm. you. In fact, I know you know that they've seen it. Yep, yep. Yep. And, you know, uh, and, and you've met some of these people. You've covered their songs, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, what are they, and I'm interviewing you also, but what do they say to you when, they, <laughs> when, when they, they meet you and they know you're the guy that's done this fantastic job? Well, David Page from Toto, I, I didn't even know that he – like had heard my cover of Africa, but when I got introduced to him, he was like, "Thank you for covering my song." And he's like, "You sing yeah. it better. You sing it better than we do." Is what he said. <laughs> and then, and then he said, "Anytime I have anybody over to my house, I show them your cover." And that was just like mind cool. blowing, you know, just like to hear uh, that that was happening. That's you know? flattering. That's flattering. Yeah, I had no but idea. Your acceptance of an equal. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's cool. To tell people, you know, and and God bless Elton John. A few years ago, he won some MTV Video Award or some award in the past six or seven years ago. I don't watch a lot of award shows, sure. but. A, but I, my daughter said, you got to see this. And he was accepting an award. And I remember him holding this award. And he was really kind of caught for a second. He looked down. He goes, no disrespect to all of you. And he pointed on the front few rows at all the artists. He goes, but this is for all the people in the garage bands and, and bands that never had signed, got mm-hmm. signed like we did and were lucky enough that are better than we are, <laughs> that are sitting at home. This is for them. <laughs> That's cute. And it's true, you know, because yeah. in the music industry, it is about talent, but it's also about luck and yeah. the right place at the right time, whether right. it's as an artist or somebody like me doing what I do. I, I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not doing what I do because I'm the greatest guy in the world. I do it because I had friends that helped me yeah, and yeah. people that helped me along the way. And every time I have somebody that's coached me or helped me, that's allowed me to succeed at what I'm doing. Definitely a family that stands behind me, a wife that uh, puts up yeah. with all the, that it, it is entailed in this because there's a lot of late nights at shows. Yeah. And stuff yeah. and stuff. It definitely helps to have a family who's patient and understanding <laughs> and friends. Yeah. And friends. Yeah. You're a part-time friend sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, but like this right here with, with Zoom and FaceTime mm-hmm. and things like that, where I stay connected to my friends back in Texas. That's awesome. That I see them just as much now as I did when I lived there or more <laughs> because we, this is easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is easy. That's cool, man. Well, it's been great talk to you. I'm talking to you. Yes, Kyle. it's been wonderful. I I, uh, I enjoy our friendship. Yeah, me too. I I, uh, I, I really enjoyed a bunch, and I and I'm glad that you've had some success. Uh, I'm disappointed in this year and what's going on in the world, yeah. but I think that uh, once we pick back up, there'll still be a need for your music, and you'll you'll find yourself rebooked yeah. for next year, oh, so. if not later this fall. You will. And if and the- um if not, I've at least developed a new product. I can do live streams now, so <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I can do that privately or publicly. So I'm I'm trying That's to right. adapt. I'm trying to adapt. Yeah, we'll do know. hair care products. We'll do hair growing. Right. Products. We'll do others, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank Perfect. you for having me. Yeah, and thank you for I being on. I appreciate it, and yeah. uh, and keep up the good work, and keep uh, entertaining the masses. Yeah, thanks, man, and uh, I'll, and stay in touch. I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. Bye, Kyle. Cool. So that was fun. Did you guys like that? I like Kyle a lot. He's a good guy. He's been very kind, and uh, and I'm happy to know him. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate you doing that. Um. I'm going to throw this thing in the chat there. You guys can check out this link when uh, when the show's over. Okay? Cool. Um, I saw, was it Neil? Hold on. 
One second. Um, here we go. Neil. Neil Jones. I was working on this anyway. I was gonna do it. Um, I was gonna do it tomorrow with my uh, with my piano set. But here's a little preview. <laughs> I hope I get this right. Does anybody here remember Vera Lynn? Remember how she said that we would meet again some sunny day? What has become of you? Does anybody else in here feel the way I do? <laughs> I was actually learning that because I was learning uh, tomorrow night. I'm, I'm, it's spoiler alert. Plug yours if you don't want to know. Uh, during the piano set, I'm going to do, uh, I might even open the show with, uh, nobody's, nobody's home. No, nope, Yeah. Is that what it's called? Nobody's home? There'll be nobody home. Nobody home? Nobody home. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm gonna, I was going to do nobody home and then I was like, and then I was like, ah, oh, I got to do Vera too. <laughs> Cause it just flows. Right. Anyway, good stuff. Thank you, Tim. Very kind. Uh, let's do, that doesn't count as the Pink Floyd request. I'll still do, uh, wish you were here. We will in a sec, yeah. Wish You Were Here was requested before the interview, so we'll do that. Uh, thank you, folks, for watching. There ha haven't been a ton of donations today, so it's not too late if you're interested in helping out. So you think you can tell Heaven from hell Blue sky from pain Can you tell a green field From a cold steel rail a Smile from a veil Do you think you can tell Did they get you to trade your heroes for goats Hot ashes for trees Hot air for a cool breeze Cold cup for change Did you exchange A walk on part in a war For a lead role in a cave
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna tease something real fast. Anyone know it? Oh, thank you, uh, Raymond. Yeah, um, I gotta practice after image. I gotta dedicate a week to after image by itself on piano. I'm serious. It's just it's gonna take me some time to get that ready. Uh, but I want to do it for sure. Thank you, Tim Collins. What? Oh, they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah John Pizzarelli got it. Yeah. Oh, someone else got it. Oh, yeah, Todd. Good job, Todd. Oh, you wanted, um, Rick, you wanted um, Mystic Rhythms, right? Can we do it tomorrow? It's almost ready. <laughs> There's a story in my eyes Turn the pages of desire Now it's time to change I don't remember the words. Anyway, yeah, I'm working on that one. I love that song. I can feel you tremble when we touch And I feel the hands of fate Reaching out to both of us Yeah, good stuff. Uh, I got to meet Jimmy Jameson. Really, really nice guy. Um, I'll, when I show that, when I do that song for the first time, I'll show you a couple pictures of us together. I got to f sing freaking... I had the tiger with him on stage. It was awesome. Yeah. Very nice guy. Uh, oh, and there's another. Oh, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Metro. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Maybe we can do the Metro. What's that? We'll do Mike's Choice right now. All right, so this is, we're, gonna, we're, we're at Mike's Choice. I'm just going to do a couple more songs. It's been a long show <laughs> with the interview. The interview was long, uh, but worth it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is Mike's Choice. And uh, first we're going to play... A little clip of Noah singing the next song, which is a Bob Seger song. Um, how old do you think he is there? Like maybe four years ago? Probably. This is, that's here. It was like probably right after we moved here. So he's probably like five, four or five in that video. Yeah, go ahead. Here's Noah. Sunny day today, copy me. Sunny day today, copy me. Sunny day today, copy me. <laughs> So good. All right. I don't know if I can beat that, but I'll, I'll add my rendition to his. Thank you. Thank you, donators. Thank you, Drew. The gypsy wind is blowing warm tonight. Sky is started and the time is right. And still, you're telling me you have to go. Before you leave, there's something you should know. Yeah, something you should know, babe. I've seen you smiling in the summer sun. I've seen your long hair flying when you run. Made my mind up that it's meant to be Someday, lady, you'll accompany me Someday, lady, you'll accompany me Out where the rivers meet the sound and sea You're high above me now, you're wild and free Oh, but someday, lady, you'll accompany me Someday, lady, you'll accompany me Say that love's a losing game You start with fire but you lose the flame The ashes smolder but the warmth soon gone You end up cold and lonely on your own I'll take my chances babe, I'll risk it all 
I think I like Noah's version better, but that was pretty good. <laughs> he probably got more of the words right than I did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I did pretty well. <laughs> cool. All right. So um, I think we're going to... What? What? Oh. Are we good? <laughs> I'm just seeing if it's reacting. <laughs> I froze. I'm sorry. Okay. Um... All right, let's let's <laughs> let me see if I have any uh, more requests I want to uh, deal with at the moment. Uh, Ruby Tuesdays, oh, Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> Sorry, you wanted a song, not a restaurant, or um, Heroes. Yes, good stuff. Uh, let's see, and Raymond. Yes, we already talked about Afterimage, and Tim. Okay, we're good. We are caught up. Thank you, folks, for uh, uh, helping me try to salvage today. <laughs> I appreciate you. And uh, are we out of sync now? She says we're out of sync. Yeah, sometimes we lag and we're out of sync. All right. Yeah. No, she says it's out of sync. I think I think we've hit a sink hole. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, I'm going to do the sphere and try to get out of here in one piece. Hit it. We can walk our roads together if our goals are all the same We can run alone and free If we pursue a different aim Let the truth of love be lighted Let the love of truth shine clear Sensibility Armed with sense and liberty with a heart and mind united in a single perfect sphere. <laughs> um, are you checking it? Is it way out of sync? <laughs> Timmy's like watching on his phone now to see if it's. Super out of sync or not. It doesn't matter. We only got one song left. Sorry about the syncing issues. I've got, I've got that syncing... I've got that syncing feeling. We're out of sync. Sorry. Um, yeah, sometimes we hit a glitch and it just throws things off. So not much I can do about it at this point. Uh, I don't think it was my fault. No, I don't... The camera thing? No, it's not the feed. I mean, it's not us. It's, I mean, it's the feed, but it's not... Anyway... Oh, uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, Todd. I appreciate you, man. I'll choose the encore. Thank you, Marianne. Wasn't there something else that I was supposed to do, though? I feel like I'm forgetting something that was, like, suggested. <laughs> I don't know any NSYNC. That, I know, it'd be a perfect time. I don't know any Backstreet Boys, either. You are my 
fire. I like that song a lot, actually. Just saying. All right. Uh, let's do Ruby Tuesday. Sure. And uh, sorry if it's out of sync. Huh? I know. No, it's... Uh, yeah, the audio is going to be Ruby Tuesday, but the video is like Ruby Wednesday. <laughs> she. Oh. Oh, we're up. Okay, good. She would never say where she came from. Yesterday don't matter if it's gone. While the sun is bright. Or in the darkest night, no one knows She comes and goes Don't question why she needs to be so free She'll tell you it's the only way to be She just can't be chained To a life where nothing's gained And nothing's lost at such a cost Goodbye Ruby Tuesday Who could hang a name on you When you change with every new day Still I'm gonna miss you There's no time to lose I heard her say Cash your dreams before they slip away Dying all the time Lose your dreams and you will lose your mind Ain't life unkind Yeah, we should do some synchronicity, huh? Yeah. 148 people? <laughs> what? Frames? Oh. That's probably frames dropped, yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, Matt, for being a fan for years, Matt Coppola. Thank you all. Very kind. Um, yeah. Think we two. Uh. Yeah, we did that before. Look it up. <laughs> uh, right on. A uh, couple things I'm going to be doing. Let me give you some teases for tomorrow night. A couple, not, I mean, not little teases, but just mention them. Yeah, you can meet them. Oh, you know, reverse good uh, for now. Uh, I'm going to do tomorrow night. I'm probably going to do. I'm probably going to do some Boston on piano. I'm thinking at least. Oh, um, man, I'll never be. I'm thinking. Um, hey, Noah. You want to come say hi? Here comes Noah. Come say hi. Smile. <laughs> and uh, let's see. I'm going to do... I'm I'm planning on doing I Love You. That's the one I've been working on. 
on piano. Uh, it's a tricky one. I'm going to do some Beatles for you. Probably do, do a little For No One, maybe. Maybe something else. No, I'm talking about tomorrow. Uh, and, yeah, I'm basically done for today. Um, oh, and I might do some, I might do some radio, ra- debut some Radiohead. I've been practicing that, sort of. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's still tough to play and sing at the same time, but yeah. It's hard to know when you're really ready on something like that <laughs> until you try. Um, yeah. And we're still working on that Survivor tune, too. That's the band, Survivor. I really like that song. It's a really good song. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really... Those are some of the ones I've been kind of working up. Hold on. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a couple more. Looking at my oh, pretty soon I'm, I'm gonna try Blue Collar Man. Pretty soon, working on that one. I think I can do Mystic Rhythms tomorrow. I'll give that a go. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do Keep on Loving You tomorrow night. I haven't really had time for that one yet on piano, but I'll do that soon. I'm gonna do Nobody's Home, as previously mentioned. I, I want to do Billy Squire. I think I'm almost ready on In the Dark. Uh, I might try All Out of Love again sometime soon. You can ask me for that if you want. Um, I want to do Cinnamon Girl sometime soon. Um, <laughs> Noah's singing some Pink Floyd over here. Uh, Sugar Mountain. Oh, I, I was also working on... How's it go? No, was it? Mom suggested that one. Down a dream. I basically know how to play it. I just need to learn the words. Woo-hoo. Oh, woo-hoo. Yeah, that's a good one. And I was also working on. Well, I won't back down. Yeah. Um, I know, right? Oh, and the other one. I'll do this one sometime soon. We both lie silent still in the dead of the night. Yeah, I kind of know that one. Uh, I'm working on a, I think I want to rework some Foreigner. It was, I, I used to know an acoustic arrangement. I, I made one of uh, That Was Yesterday. That's a good song. That's kind of in the works. Yeah, so the people who stuck around to the very end of the show get, get a sneak preview of one of the upcoming events. Um, that's a lot of them. Oh, I'm going to do some more Toad uh, with, uh, with Bryce. Bryce. When Bryce comes, we're going to do a Fly From Heaven. world again yeah good song yeah that's toad i love that song all right that's that's a pretty good list there stuff i'm also i'm thinking about learning you got lucky by tom petty on piano oh and kiss on my list those are ones i want to work up on piano and i might do silent running on guitar can you hear me and um yeah and i also probably might do uh when it's over by loverboy i like that one a lot too that would be a guitar one. All right. Thanks, guys. I'm done rambling. And uh hope you've enjoyed the show. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Remember, it's later. Europe, uh, you got something to look forward to for Sunday breakfast? A little music <laughs> to wake up to if you miss the show tomorrow night. And uh, I've got shows regularly scheduled as scheduled, uh, planned on Monday and Tuesday with my guitar lesson on Tuesday night. Or Tuesday afternoon. Late afternoon. I should do a guitar lesson for Tuesday afternoon on Tuesday afternoon. One of these days. Oh, I was going to do the Metro. Dang it. That's what it was. It was the Metro. Let me do it tomorrow night, okay? Shoot. Hey, throw that picture up there, though. <laughs> this is what this, Throw the picture up there for the Metro that I made. Uh, I was going to show this next time I played Metro, but we'll just we'll just do it right now. Yeah, that one. Uh-huh. See you later. Stay strong. Stay brave. Stay safe. Stay cool, stay young, stay hungry, Uh, stay away, (laughs) I don't know, 
stay home. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all the stays I can think of. Um, right on. And cover the music, cover the world. <laughs>